Let's talk about Amnesty International. Let's talk about this London-based organization that is meddling in Thailand's internal political affairs. Let's talk about why Thai people are upset about Amnesty International and whether it's unreasonable or not. Because if you read the Western media, they're going to make it look like Thai people are extremists and uh, really out of touch with this desire to oust Amnesty International. After all, Amnesty International is this uh, well-known human rights organization. How could anyone be against an organization advocating for human rights? Well, I'm going to show you that that's not what Amnesty International is, and that for decades, Amnesty International has been directly involved in some of the worst human rights abuses on Earth in, in recent human history, and they're doing it again. They're in Thailand siding with violent abusive opposition groups backed by foreign interests, and they are trying to destroy yet another country. And this isn't the first time, and I'm going to show you previous instances of amnesty being directly involved in campaigns to help vilify a country that will then be targeted by uh, for destruction by the West. Uh, but first, let's take a look at this article here. This is actually originally from Reuters. Anti-Amnesty International Drive picks up, and there is a petition with 1.2 million signatures uh, demanding that amnesty be expelled from the country. And Reuters is going to call it a human rights group. They're going to claim that the people who want amnesty ousted are ultra-royalists to try to make them sound like they're extremists rather than completely reasonable people. Uh, and then right here in this, this sentence where they're accusing the, the people of being ultra-royalists, whatever that even means, they admit that it's a London-based group. Now tell me, why is a London-based group meddling in the internal political affairs of Thailand? The UK right now is involved in some of the worst human rights abuses on earth right now. Uh, London right now is helping sponsor the Saudi-led war against Yemen. This is deemed by the UN the worst humanitarian crisis on earth today. Why isn't Amnesty International mobilizing absolutely all of their resources to stop that? Why are they involved in Thailand's internal political affairs? Why are they injecting themselves into a political conflict they have absolutely nothing to do with? because that's actually what Amnesty International does. They ignore the actual abuses being carried out by the West. They help cover up abuses sponsored by the West in targeted countries like Thailand, and they do all of it under the smokescreen of human rights advocacy. This is the aid to the prime minister. This is a, a quote describing what Amnesty International is doing. This organization destroys the security of the country. It supports groups that want to topple the monarchy. It lacks impartiality and sided with an anti-government movement that is anti-constitutional monarchy. A and right up here, Reuters is claiming that actually the opposition is just urging reform. This is a complete lie. Reuters is just outright lying. That is not true. These protesters go out on the street and they are openly calling for the removal of the monarchy. They want the monarchy ended. They want the entire system of government in Thailand changed. They don't just want to oust the current government. They want to disfigure the entire political system. Down here they say the drive to expel amnesty gained traction after it made comments in support of three protest leaders whose actions were deemed by the constitutional court as an attempt to overthrow the monarchy. And again, that is exactly what they're trying to do. They're trying to overthrow the Thai monarchy. They're trying to overthrow the current elected government. They also want to remove the Thai military as an independent institution that has in the past helped keep in check U.S.-backed opposition groups that have tried to seize power and run the country into the ground. And then Amnesty responds by saying, while we recognize that the Royal Thai government has a duty to protect public order and national security, we continue to highlight that authorities must do so in a manner that is in accordance with international human rights law. And uh, again, this is a London-based organization that has no business doing anything at all in Thailand. I, I'm, could you imagine a Thai-based organization injecting itself into the middle of British internal political affairs? How bizarre that would be and how unacceptable that would be. Imagine if it was a Chinese-sponsored organization injecting itself into the middle of British or American internal political affairs. How unacceptable that would be. But because they're white people, they're allowed to do it to 
non-white people, I guess. I guess that's still a thing in 2022. And then this Reuters ar article complains that there's more than 1,700 activists facing security-related charges, including at least 169 charged under the ELTS Majesty Law, which uh, I guess they meant Lay's Majesty Law, which Thailand doesn't even have. Uh, there is no Lay's Majesty Law in Thailand. There is anti-defamation laws that protect the public and also a very specific anti-defamation law that protects the head of state specifically. There are defamation laws that protect absolutely everyone in Thai society. You can't defame people. It's a form of abuse. And that's the irony here, isn't it? It's that Amnesty International poses as a human rights organization, and yet they're, they're here in Thailand, a, a London-based organization in Thailand, interfering in the internal political affairs of Thailand and defending people who are actually out abusing other people. And then Reuters complains about the uh, draft law regulating nonprofit organizations, and they, they worry that it might muzzle freedom of expression, but in actuality, what it's going to do is demand more transparency from these fake NGOs that are all funded by the US government, the British government, various European governments who are vectors of foreign interference in Thailand's internal political affairs. Again, these are things that the West would never accept any other nation doing within their own internal political affairs, and yet they have been blatantly doing it in Thailand for decades and decades. And uh, I have been covering this since 2009. That's how long they've been doing this. But Amnesty International, their checkered history goes back even further than that. I want to show you this. This is from January 1991, and it's Amnesty responds to President Bush. And uh, this is from Boston College Libraries. Amnesty responds to President Bush. Just look it up and you could read the whole thing. Uh, but I'll give you a little summary. What it's saying is that Oh, President Bush Sr., not President Bush Jr., President Bush Sr. used our report about uh, allegations of human rights abuses in Kuwait to justify a horrific war that killed thousands and thousands of people uh, and created all kinds of human rights abuses all on its own. And we reject that. But as you notice, the, the date is January 28, 1991. And the Gulf War actually kicked off on January 17. And this is what Amnesty International always does. They, they help spread lies. So in this case, the lie was what? The lie was the, the Kuwaiti incubator baby lie, where Amnesty International spread this lie around that Iraqi troops were in Kuwait for, for some bizarre reason, just taking babies out of incubators and letting them die on the cold floor. And they had some actress come in and, and crying and claiming she saw all these dead babies. And it turned out to be a, an utter fabrication. Not, none of it was true. And Amnesty International helped spread that lie. And then once the war was going, there was absolutely no way to stop it. Amnesty would then come out and say, oh, uh, we did a little investigating. Turns out it wasn't true. So they, they're trying to cover for their own role in spreading this lie to keep their, integ their, you know, their integrity and their reputation intact so that they could help spread lies again in the future. And uh, they did that, exactly that. They did that in Libya. So this is an article from the Christian Science Monitor. No evidence of Libya Viagra rape claims, but war crimes plenty. And uh, they're talking about this ridiculous lie uh, told by the West that Muammar Gaddafi, the Libyan leader, was handing out Viagra to his troops and they were forming like rape squads roving Libya and, and just terrorizing all of these women. And Amnesty International played a central role in helping spread that lie. And then this is, again, look at the dates. This is June 24th and NATO intervened in March. So it was too late. It was too late to do anything about this, the war had already started. NATO, the United States, Canada, UK, Australia, they were all busy bombing Libya, destroying one of the most developed countries in Africa. Uh, and then Amnesty International comes out and says, you know those lies we were telling about uh, rape squads and, and all kinds of abuses by Libyan troops? Turns out there's no evidence of any of that. Sorry, oops, oops, we did it again. We did it at during the Gulf War in the 1990s, and now we just did it again in Libya in 2011. And what, what was the outcome for both 
Iraq and Libya, uh, devastating U.S.-led wars of aggression that destroyed both countries. Our Iraq is still a mess to this day, and Libya is a failed state. There is no functioning government. It is still at war with itself. It had gone from the most developed country in Africa to the most dysfunctional country in Africa, and Amnesty played a role in that. And now Amnesty International is in Thailand interfering in yet another political crisis where violence is involved. They're not reporting on the violence. Uh, when when U.S.-backed protesters in the streets of Thailand opposed to the government and the monarchy shot a cop in the head and blew the face off of another cop with an explosive, Amnesty International was utterly silent. They didn't, they didn't say anything at all about that. They didn't say anything at all about the weeks and months of daily violence carried out by these protesters. And, and all they did was talk about the police, the military, the courts. Uh, so it is uh, not an impartial organization. It is here to meddle in Thailand's internal political affairs. It's a foreign organization. Thai people want it expelled. It should be expelled. So I just thought I would do a quick video about that. I've talked about this. I've written about this before. I've tried to bring attention to this uh, campaign by Thai people to expel Amnesty International. And again, uh, when Thai people supposedly want democracy, the West will be there and say, you should listen to them because the West is sponsoring them. They wouldn't even be saying any of that. There would be none of these movements without the Western support. But when Thai people on their own, uh, their own institutions, their own businesses, their own special interests get together and want to do something, the West says, no, you can't do that. You can't move against Amnesty International, some fake human rights organization based in the UK. You can't do that. Uh, we're white people. You don't tell us what to do. We tell you what to do. That That is essentially what this is about. And don't let anyone try to tell you differently. This is what's going on in the year 2022. The U.S. is desperately, desperately trying to encircle and contain China, uh, divide and destroy all of China's partners. They know there's no way they'll ever convince any of these governments to, you know, side with the U.S. Side with the U.S. on what versus China and, and for what? And so the only thing that they know how to do is divide and destroy. This is what empire has done for generations. They're up against something new, though. They're up, they're up against a, a non-white nation that is technologically on par with them, outnumbers them five to one. And they're, they're offering a, a completely different alternative to what the West has to offer. And there's no reason in the world why anyone in their right mind, uh, except through coercion, would choose the US over China. And so this is what we're going to be seeing. We're going to be seeing this play out in many different ways, in many different countries. Thailand is obviously a country I'm going to focus on because I'm based in Thailand, but there's similar stories going on everywhere you look. So we have to keep an eye on this. We gotta keep reporting on this. No one else is going to talk about this, especially in Southeast Asia. Uh, so I'll, I'll continue keeping an eye on this. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share it. Think about subscribing to my channel. It's free to do and it helps the channel grow. I have a website, newatlas.report. You can find and follow all of my work there. Even if I'm kicked off of YouTube and other social media platforms, you can still go to my website. I can embed videos from other video sharing platforms there on the website. So if you bookmark that and share it with others, you will always be able to find and follow my work there. Speaking of social media, I am on Twitter at Brian underscore Berletic. You can find and follow my work there for the time being. I'm also on Chinese social media, Weibo. And you can find the links for all of this in the video description below. Also in the video description below are all of the links to everything that I just talked about in this video, as well as ways you can help support my work. PayPal has changed their policy. So if you're based in Thailand, you can no longer receive or send money unless you're a registered business, which I am not. I'm just a guy on YouTube. So I, I have started a Buy Me A Coffee account. I would appreciate it. If you want to do one-time donations or even a membership, you can use Buy Me A Coffee. You could also do memberships through Patreon, which I also have. All of that is in the video description below. And to everyone who has been helping support my work, whether it's month to month, through one-time donations, or even if you're just sending me news tips or kind comments or helping share my work with other people, I really appreciate that. I couldn't, I couldn't do this work without all of that support, all of these different ways of support. So thank you so much for that. And as always, thank you for watching.